So we run a, a global equity fund, a long only equity fund. So that gives us a very big universe. Um, we don't believe all of it's investable. Um, we're looking for businesses that we believe can stand the test of time. Where we're lucky is we've spent the last 10 or more years finding 600 businesses that we think can stand the test of time. So we have an opportunity set of around 600 businesses. What's key to us though is what price we're paying for those decent businesses and we have a very strong valuation control. So we value those businesses and then we wait very patiently like a Venus flytrap for the right valuations and when they appear in the stock market we buy them very quickly with high conviction. So it's a high conviction approach that's very much valuation led. What I should also say about those 600 companies is they appear in a number of different sectors. So we think certain more cyclical businesses can be investable or more capital intensive ones and that gives us a great breadth of where we can invest across a cycle to optimise the returns we get for clients but to minimise risk. So we have thought about sustainability ever since this fund started. We need to think about sustainability to have a belief that a company can stand the test of time. So that's nothing new to us. We've always looked at E, S and G factors. I want to be clear though, this isn't a green fund. We're not just searching for green businesses. We're searching for businesses that we think are moving themselves forward positively, doing good things and making themselves better as a business model. And inherently, we hope that means that's a good outcome for the world in what it does. What's really changed over time is how much people want to speak to us about our assessment of ESG. So that's quite interesting to see that's now become a more fashionable area to speak about. You're probably slightly ill-informed there, actually. Um, we've always had a, a, a big underweight to the US relative to a benchmark. We don't look at the benchmark, just to be clear, very much, but only about 30% of our fund as a global fund is exposed in US listed terms. Many people think that looks very low given how well we've performed historically. Um, so we only have about 30% in the US and actually 40% in Europe. So people are very intrigued, how do we find good businesses in Europe? How have we performed so well given we've had so much in Europe? And the answer is we don't look at listed venues. We look at where businesses' cash flows get generated and then we use market inefficiencies to our benefit. So things like the Brexit vote three years ago allowed us to buy a business called Ferguson, which is a US business but is listed in the UK, has nothing to do with the UK market, but sold off very aggressively and meant we could buy that business cheaply. So we are naturally biased currently to Europe. Um, we will at times be biased to the US and we go where we think we get companies that are undervalued. So the way that we deliver outcomes for our clients and us, we're very heavily invested in, in the fund ourselves personally as, as managers of it, is by making sure when the times get tough that we don't participate. When the market falls 10 or 20%, we want to only fall half of that. And if we keep doing that readily, repeatedly, and make sure when the market falls we don't participate as, as badly as a market, it gives us a great starting point. And then what we try to do is we try to keep up when the market's going well. And when you get that asymmetry, that means you can deliver good performance. So the fund's been going just over seven years now. Um, the performance is top decile. But what's as important to us is we've delivered that at bottom decile volatility. This global fund is one of the lowest volatility funds in the market. But that doesn't mean you have to give up on performance given our process.